I had it all planned out to do a breeding video, but then this happened. Get away from me with those cheap moves, I got a headache. So, I'm doing a species showcase. Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and welcome back to Tarantula Haven. Today I am doing a species showcase on the Pacillotheria rufolata, commonly known as the red slate ornamental. And I'm a little bit nervous about this one because this is the only one of my pokies that has ever given me reason to be nervous around her. Sometimes when I walk by the enclosure she's gone so far as to slap at the glass. There have been times when she has given me threat postures when I open up her enclosure and she's even lunged at me a couple of times when I've gone in there to remove a dead plant or her water dish. And of course, I always use tongs around her because I would hate for her to do that with my hand in there. So she's given me reason to be nervous around her. I don't know how she's gonna react when I pull her out. A lot of times they tend to chill out as far as the tarantulas that I do pull out. Um, when they get on that cork bark, they're a little bit nervous and just sit still and wanna disappear but I don't know how she's gonna behave because she does have a tendency to be a little bit high strung. And the reason that I'm doing the species showcase is because I have to rehouse her. She's currently in an Exoterra Nano Tall and I'm moving her into a Zoomed Medium Tall, I think it's called, which is the equivalent of an Exoterra uh, Mini Tall. So that should give her plenty of space to stretch out and grow and it should be her forever home. So I wonder how she's gonna do when I pull her out. Here's hoping that she does well and she likes her new enclosure. So let's go ahead and get on into it. Pisilotheria rufolata, commonly known as the red slate ornamental. This is an arboreal old world tarantula from the southwestern Ghats region of India. It is considered endangered in the wild due to deforestation and collection for the pet trade.
This tarantula is distinguished by its mossy green color and beautiful fractal pattern on its abdomen that almost looks painted on. It is the largest of the Pisilitheria genus along with Pisilitheria ornata. Females have been reported reaching leg spans of 9 inches. There have been some reports of them reaching 11 inches, but I could not verify this. My female is currently 7 inches and growing. This is a fast growing species. Mine grew to about 3 inches in its first year and has reached her current 7 inch leg span in 3 years. Females can live 11 to 12 years while males only live 2 to 3. Since this is an arboreal species, a tall enclosure is necessary. I keep mine in a planted enclosure to keep the humidity relatively high, about 60 to 70%, and she has done well. I keep plants in the enclosure for both aesthetic reasons and to remind myself to keep the enclosure humid, but they can tolerate drier conditions, just not bone dry. Mine started out as a communal of five and they lived together without incident for a year before I decided to separate them. I still have three females remaining and the other two have since matured male and passed. Like most Bacillotheria, they can be skittish and defensive. They possess medically significant venom and can be very bold in their adult size. They are very fast and can jump, so I would definitely not recommend them for a beginner without experience with arboreal species. As a pokey lover, I would definitely recommend them for your collection because of the size and unique coloration. After all, there aren't too many green tarantulas out there. Well, that didn't go nearly as bad as I thought it was going to go. That actually went really well. Um, I was expecting her to be a lot more bolty than she was, but um, one of the things that I can say about her is that she did not want to sit still for very long. There was a couple of times when I got her to sit still long enough to get some decent footage, and I even got a couple of photographs, but not many. And that's because she kept wanting to walk and go underneath the cork bark because she did not like the lights at all. So that's to be expected. They are 
are a little bit photo sensitive and they don't want to be sitting out, especially when the lights are on. Um, I usually catch her early in the mornings or at night when she's sitting out on display. But for the most part, if it's light, then she's going to be hiding behind her cork bark. So that's exactly what she wanted to do. I did not get a single threat posture out of her. She did not react defensively, not the first time, which really, really surprised me. But what I did notice was that she is very bold. I guess she's very aware of her size and she was able to push the stick wherever she wanted to. I tried to guide her with the stick to get her to go where I wanted her to and she was not having it. She would just push right past it or climb over it, and she was not even phased by the stick at all. The best thing that I had going for me was the catch cup, because she did like going into the catch cup. I guess she felt secure in there. So I kept having to put her in the catch cup or let her walk into it, putting her back on the cork bark and you know, kind of guiding her back out. She'd sit still for a little bit and then off she would go again. So this was not one of the easiest rehousings that I've done. Um, as far as like getting her out and putting her in, yes, that was easy. But as far as like trying to get any kind of decent footage and pictures and things like that, she was not a willing participant. But you know, that's just how it is. And she's now in her new enclosure and it seems like she seems to like it very much. And hopefully she will grow nice and big and be a good breeder for me in the future. Before I go, I wanted to bring your attention to my USR t-shirt and uh, it's taken me a while to get it in, but I finally got it in. But I joined USR back when the whole America Competes Act thing was going on. And I was one of these people that was a little bit ignorant about what laws were being passed and what was affecting our hobby and things like that. And it wasn't until I watched Richard Stewart's uh, of the Tarantula Collective, his podcast, where uh, he had the US art guy in there and was asking him questions that it really opened my eyes that the entire exotic hobby is being threatened at this time. Um, and it doesn't matter what kind of exotic you have, whether you have an exotic bird or whether you keep praying mantises or whether you have reptiles and amphibians or if you keep a rack like I do. The hobbies are the hobby is being threatened. So um, like many of you, I felt like I was powerless. I felt like I didn't have a voice in this. But after watching that podcast, I realized that we do have a voice and that is through groups like US ARC. US ARC will go to bat for you and they will express their concerns to these politicians that are trying to pass these laws and so on and try to influence them to not vote in that direction. So um, if you are like me and you feel like you don't have a voice in it, then definitely check out US Arc. If you go to their website, they do have a donation button where you can donate a certain amount of money, but it always works best if you join their ranks and show your support by that method because that gives them influence over those politicians because they can say, this is how many people we have backing us. So please definitely check out US Arc and consider joining them. And um, right now, if you shop at Fear Not Tarantulas, Fear Not Tarantulas is offering you a 10% discount if you join US Arc and show them proof of membership. So definitely consider it. Um, your hobby is being threatened if you are involved in any way, shape, or or form if you live in the United States. So definitely look into it so that you too can have a voice. And that does it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like if you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Your support is greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to become a patron yourself, there's a link down below in the description as well as all the others. Take a look at US Arc and as always, keep loving them Tarantulas.